The fifth biggest earthquake in Oklahoma history rocks the state. The high-tension 2016 presidential campaigns wind down, and experts say Oklahoma wind the Oklahoma wind industry gets too much free money. This is OU Nightly. The strongest earthquake in Oklahoma history rumbled across the state last night, damaging buildings and leaving folks wondering, is this ever going to end? Sunday night, a 5.0 magnitude quake was centered near the town of Cushing. Since then, the USGS has picked up five more earthquakes, varying from 2.6 to 3.8 magnitude. No injuries were reported, but the city manager says between 40 and 50 Cushing buildings were damaged. Throughout the day, workers inspected buildings and examined the rubble as residents tried to settle their nerves. OU Knightley's London Bulgarelli was in Cushing earlier today for a first-hand look at the damage. Well, as you can see in the building behind me, the damage is pretty substantial. There's a large hole in the top of the building. As you can see in the front here, the building has been destroyed almost completely. It's gonna cost a lot of money for the owner of this building. They're still doing damage assessments right now on the buildings. They're using drones to fly above the buildings and rate the damage. Once they get done with that, they'll give us more information and we'll find out how much it's gonna cost this town to rebuild. And as with previous quakes, the Corporation Commission is working on restrictions it will impose on wastewater injection operations in the area. In the past, the orders have included shutting down some wells and reducing the volume of wastewater injected by others. Within minutes of the 5.0 magnitude earthquake Sunday in Cushing, the Oklahoma Department of Transportation crews were on the scene. They immediately began inspecting the 110 state highway bridges within a 30-mile radius of the epicenter. ODOT reports the inspectors found no damage. And many have linked the abundance of saltwater injection wells in the state to the increase in earthquakes in recent years. Oklahoma Geological Survey Director Jeremy Boak says the simplest way to prevent injection wells related to quakes is to stop injecting water so deep. So the first strategy, the simplest strategy, would be to back up hole, to, to, fill, to plug the hole that you've got up to a shallower level and inject into a horizon that is permeable and porous but which doesn't have a connected pathway down to the basement to these deep faults well below the zone of operation. The USGS says there has been a total of six earthquakes in the past 24 hours in the Sooner State, mostly aftershocks from the big Cushing jolt. That's been pretty gloomy outside. It's, I think it's our first rainy kind of cold day of yeah, the fall. I got drenched because I did not get the memo. So Kylie, can we expect more of this gloomy weather? We can throughout the rest of the evening today. Wet and cool out there today, and a lot of those showers have pushed their way off east and are starting to dissipate. We will see that next round, though, of showers make their way through on about 8 p.m. and then ending again after midnight. Much cooler out there right now than last week. 63 right now in Norman, mid to lower 60s throughout the entire state. And coming up in Maine weather, I will talk again about that Cushing earthquake, and I'll have our first look at that Election Day forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kylie. And though Hillary Clinton holds the advantage over Donald Trump in just enough states to win the presidency, her lead has narrowed. The Associated Press has moved New Hampshire from leaning Democrat to a toss-up state. It has shifted Arizona and Iowa from toss-ups to leaning Republican, and Virginia from strong Democrat to leaning Democrat. Finally, it has also moved Texas from leaning Republican to strong Republican. And with tomorrow's election, students on campus are saying it's more important than ever to vote. OU Nightly's Amy Schnabeck spoke with OU students on why millennials are some of the most powerful voters in an election. Millennials, the group of new or younger voters, is a group targeted by presidential candidates because of their freshness. Millennials are the type of um, voter that the candidate usually tends to go for because they know that our views like change every day. Politically involved students hope that younger voters will realize the bigger picture of this election. Right, like we have just as much a vote as uh, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds as people who have been voting for years and years and years. With both Clinton and Trump courting younger or even first time voters, student political leaders say it doesn't take much time to greatly impact the upcoming election. 
that even if some people like think they don't have a lot of money or like can't influence elections they're like donating to super PACs or anything along those lines just take a look at how millennials are the deciding vote or one of the deciding votes in the upcoming election you can see how much power and how much influence college kids have Tuesday's presidential election isn't the only election OU students need to be concerned about. OU's Student Government Association debates for president and vice president are this evening at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. in the Student Union. And with Donald Trump a runaway favorite in Oklahoma, voter attention is shifting to the seven state questions. One of the most contentious is state question 777, the so-called right to farm issue. If passed, the bill would create a new section in the state constitution that expresses rights to agriculture technology, livestock procedures, and ranching. Supporters say a yes vote would protect farmers from restrictive laws. Opponents say 777 is the brainchild of big corporations. The two sides have invested heavily in advertising, like these television commercials, to try to turn the vote their way. Here's how the spending breaks down. 777 opponents have spent nearly $800,000, while supporters have dished out almost half a million dollars to spread their message. The grand total spent by both, $1.2 million. And for more on that state question, we turn to OU Nightly political analyst Dylan Billings in the studio. How are you? Thanks for being here with us. Oh, thank you guys. Now, we know the, uh, what the state question is. Who's for it and who's against it? <coughs> Excuse me. So typically we see that uh, Republican politicians as well as farmers and ranchers organizations are in support of the, the right to farm amendment. And then former Democratic or current Democratic politicians as well as municipalities uh, and some environmental groups are actually opposed to it. Okay, so we know Republicans on one side, Democrats on the other. Any specific groups or organizations? Yeah, so the Oklahoma Farm Bureau uh, is one that has been uh, working in, in support uh, of the amendment. And then the city of Edmond, city of Oklahoma City, um, the Sierra Club, a, a national environmental organization, have been working um, against it. Right. So let's say that this, let's say Oklahoma voters come out for this bill and it passes. What are some ramifications that we could see? Uh, you it know, pass? it depends on who you ask, right? So opponents say that this would just open the floodgates for foreign businesses or, you know, environmental disaster and the supporters say that this is protecting small businesses. Really, I think the, the ramifications of this won't be seen for a few years, right? So what it says is that no new regulations can be passed without strict scrutiny. Um, but I'm also wondering if this could be used as leverage to take away some existing regulations as right. well. All right. Thanks, Thank Dylan. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Dylan and other analysts from the OU Political Science Department will be with us tomorrow night for OU Nightly's Election 2016 primetime election coverage. The action gets underway right at 7 p.m. as the polls close. We'll have live election coverage all evening with reports from the Republican and Democratic watch parties in Oklahoma City and other locations, as well as up-to-the-minute results on all the races and questions of interest to Oklahoma voters. Now, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are winding down their campaigns with stops in key battleground states. Emily Akins is in the News Center with more Election Eve news. Yeah, Eric, the dollar rose today after the FBI decided Hillary Clinton will not face criminal charges. Experts say this was seen as a boost to her chances of winning tomorrow in the election. The FBI announced last night it stood by its earlier finding that no criminal charges were warranted against Clinton in her email practices. A chief marketing strategist at Worldwide Marketing Market says markets want consistency and continuity pointing towards Clinton. And with the election winding down, both Clinton and Trump have some last words. Donald Trump spent his time in Florida commenting on his loyalty to the state. I will not forget you and I will do everything I can to help people who have given so much, worked so hard throughout their lives for generations to build this country. And that was actually the Hillary Clinton soundbite, but um, Donald Trump did spend his time in Florida commenting on his loyalty to the Florida state. Florida is my second home, a state I love so much. And by the way, Hillary, once this is over, she'll never come back to Florida. The latest voter surveys from, from Bloomberg show Clinton entering Election Day tomorrow with a small but not substantial lead. And Eric, the Justice Department will have more than 500 employees monitoring elections in 28 different states tomorrow. Back to you. Thanks, Emily. And still ahead on OU Nightly, changes could impact funding for Oklahoma's wind energy industry. 
Welcome back to today's Earth Report. The wind may come sweeping down the plains in Oklahoma, but the money being blown in the wind industry's direction may become significantly less. A new report says an Oklahoma tax credit that provides millions of dollars to the wind industry is too generous and should be trimmed down sooner rather than later. Oklahoma provides about $1 billion in business tax breaks each year, but still struggles to accommodate the budget for public services such as education. The wind industry tax break is scheduled to close for new recipients on January 1st, 2021. But since the release of this report, the state consultant has recommended moving the date to January 1st of 2018. Critics of Oklahoma's wind industry claim that Oklahoma has received very little for the amount of taxpayer money spent. While Jeff Clark of the Wind Coalition argues that the report looks incomplete and ignores the benefits such as saving money for utility rate payers, providing funds for public education, and providing renewable energy for companies that want to invest in Oklahoma. And good news for electric car owners. The White House released their plan to build 48 national electric vehicle charging networks on nearly 25,000 miles of highways across 35 U.S. states. The Obama administration said that 28 states, General Motors, BMW, and Nissan have agreed to work together to help jumpstart the charging stations. New roadside signs will be installed to help motorists find the charging stations, and 24 local governments have agreed to buy hundreds of additional electric vehicles for their government fleets across the nation. Construction of the charging stations will be funded by a federal loan program, as well as an additional boost from the Volkswagen v Diesel Emissions Settlement. And that's pretty much all we have today for the Earth Report. Back to you guys. Thanks, Thanks Courtney. Courtney. And still ahead on OU Nightly, we have Kylie Caps here with more on today's rain. It was a rainy day out there today, but how long will this wet weather last? I'll have more coming up in Maine weather. Welcome back to OU Nightly, I'm Kylie Caps. A fairly significant earthquake with the epicenter located near Cushing, Oklahoma, um, shook several other states last night as well. Arkansas, Texas, Kansas, Missouri, they all felt that earthquake. Now, an interesting fact, there have been five earthquakes in the United States with magnitudes of 5.0 or greater, and three of the last five were located in Oklahoma, Fairview and Pawnee up kind of northwest, northeast of Oklahoma City were two of those other cities. Now shifting gears a little bit, rainfall that we saw today fairly Fairly, um, it was it was a nice break from that heat. We saw almost 0.2 inches of rain here in Norman and then more as you move further south. So it was a nice break from that heat relief that we did see over the past week or so. Now the current satellite moving off extensive extensive rain showers moving all the way down into south of Dallas so it has been a nice little storm system that has brought tried to bring us out of that drought that we have been seeing over the past couple of weeks that has started to creep back in but hopefully this rain will start to bring us out of that just a little bit by by Tuesday early morning, those showers will have moved off east and we'll just see a cloudy day tomorrow. Some chance there's a slight chance of rain. I forecasted about a 20% chance, but we should remain fairly dry just under cloudy skies. And then by Wednesday again, those clouds will start to move south and clear and it's going to be a nice, clear, sunny rest of the week ahead of us. So it's looking to be a really great week and then lows tonight throughout the entire state. Low 50s highs um, the day planner throughout the day tomorrow as well for your election day. It's it's going to be cooler than we saw today, increasing winds by 
4 p.m. and then highs throughout the entire state. Fairly mild temperatures, low 60s throughout the state. And then looking at our seven day forecast again Tuesday, mostly cloudy skies. And then by Wednesday, it's going to be a nice day. Mild temperatures and looking off into the rest of the week again. Lots of sunshine. It's going to be a nice week ahead of us, guys. And that chance of rain, we're entering a dry pattern. So we're going to stay dry for the next seven to 10 days. Yeah, it looks like despite the rainy day today, we're going to have more of that sunshiny weather. So. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Sounds Kylie. Great. And Kenneth Adair is here with an update on Sooner football. Kenneth? That's right, guys. OU football starts the week preparing for Baylor, while a former Sooner seems to have lost his mojo. Sports is next. Uh, the Sooners are on a six-game winning streak going into this week's face-off against the Big 12 rivals, the Baylor Bears. OU's offense will get a big boost with the return of Joe Mixon and possibly Samaj P. Ryan. The Bears, on the other hand, lose starting running back Shock Linwood to suspension. The past two years, the away team has had the better performance, but the Sooners are hoping to end that streak this weekend. So uh, we know we've got to continue to Hopefully keep improving, you know, and get some guys back, get a little stronger here this week. Hopefully the rest gives us a little bit of a, you know, a little more strength as well to uh, come into this week and be ready to play a good game. For more on Sooner football and to see an appearance by Orlando Brown and Cody Ford, Carson Williams is in Studio D with a preview for Sooner Sports Pad. Carson? Thanks, Kenneth. Sooner Sports Pad will be live tonight at 7.30 on Fox College Sports Central. We've got two big men up front. Coming to the show tonight, Orlando Brown and Cody Ford will also take a look into Jordan Woodard's new role as the top senior of the men's basketball team. And finally, Blakely Durham and I will show you our viral videos from this week. So be sure to tune in tonight, but if you can't, we'll have a replay of the show tomorrow night following the newscast. Kenneth, back to you. Thanks, Carson. Sad news for OU soccer fans as the women's team suffered a loss to West Virginia in the Big 12 championship semifinal. This ended the Sooners' regular season and their Big 12 title hopes. OU will now move on to the national tournament where they will take on SMU. And women's basketball will take on Oklahoma City University tonight in an exhibition game. The Sooners' first game of the season was a dominating performance over Midwestern State. OU hopes to improve to 2-0 after tonight. And Russell Westbrook and the Thunder are back in action as they face Hassan Whiteside and the Miami Heat tonight. OKC has started off 5-1 with Westbrook leading the charge. Westbrook is sit now second in scoring, averaging over 33 points per game, while Whiteside is top five in both rebounds and blocks. Both teams are ranked in the top ten for points allowed in a game. And former Sooner Sam Bradford and the Minnesota Vikings lost for the third time in a row this Sunday, going to the fourth with a handoff to Rhett Ellison for a one-yard touchdown just before the ball is knocked out. Later on in the game, the Lions moved quickly down the field to kick a 58-yard field goal, sending the game into overtime, where Matthew Stafford connected with Golden Tate as he breaks a couple of tackles, tiptoes down the sideline, and leaps into the end zone, ending the game 22-16. Moving over to Cleveland, the rookie dynamic duo for the Dallas Cowboys just keep on winning. Dak Prescott goes to Jason Witten for the first touchdown of the season, or of the game, sorry. Later, Ezekiel Elliott bounces outside and stretches for the end zone, and they would call that a touchdown. Later on in the third quarter, Elliott bounces another run to the outside for a TD, giving him two on the day. The Cowboys are now 7-1 in the season as they travel to Pittsburgh this weekend. And Travis Kelsey was animated after a non-call for pass interference against the Jaguars secondary. Kelsey threw in the towel early as he just could not keep his cool on the field. Kelsey ended his day by throwing a tantrum with one of the referees and was then tossed out of the game. I don't know. I can't explain it. Just stay calm. I remember when my dad put me out on the driving range for the first time as a three-year-old. Temper tantrums happened, but I wouldn't expect that from three-year-old. Right. Probably <laughs> almost 30. <laughs> right. A little, little bit of a difference, though. All Thanks, right. Kenneth. Thanks, Thank Kenneth. You. And uh, still to come on OU Niley, a Hollywood star visits Gaylord. I'm Clara Wilson at the Update Desk. 
For first-time voters or those who may have questions on their voter registration, the Oklahoma State Election Board is offering an online voter tool. Registered voters can plug in their information and find out if their polling place has changed, check out a sample ballot, or look up the status of their absentee ballot. Be sure to follow all of our election coverage and breaking news. Back to you guys. Thanks, Clara. Hollywood visited Gaylord Hall Friday night. Award-winning actor and former OU student Ed Harris hosted a screening for his 1999 film Pollock that he directed and starred in. The event was a fundraiser for Norman's Women's Resource Center. Most importantly, thanks for supporting Women's Resource Center because they do such great work and they're helping out a lot of women who need it. And the Women's Resource Center also hosted a dinner Saturday night at Sam Noble Museum. The combined events raised nearly $35,000. And Kylie, can we take a really quick look at the upcoming forecast? Yes, it's going to be another rainy weekend ahead of us. Increasing rain chance after 10 p.m. So if you're going out tonight, be sure to grab that jacket as you're headed out the door. All right, thanks, Kylie. You're Thank welcome. you, Kylie. And thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Have a great evening. Good night.